Hello again. I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. I got a question the other day after I did the video on ultra processed foods. Well, what, what about the newer cuisines that are out there? Modernist cuisine or molecular gastronomy? Uh, is ultra processed cuisine always bad for you? That's, I guess, the essence of the question. So uh, before we get into that, this channel is about lifestyle medicine. These are uh, choices you make and how you live your life uh, every day on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and how they can help you uh, be healthier and have a better sense of well-being and enjoy life more, enjoy good health for a longer period of time. It's an area called lifestyle medicine. There are six pillars. I've done a video on the introduction to lifestyle medicine. So nutrition is a large component of it, but it's not the only component. And if you like these kinds of videos, press that thumbs up, press the subscribe button, press the little bell so you can be uh, notified of future videos and uh, leave a comment and uh, we'll try to get back on, on some of these things as well. Now, going back to the uh, foods, uh, the different kinds of foods that we, we went over, the NOVA classification in the other video, and we talked about uh, the processing of food. And we mentioned the issue of ultra-processed foods, which are these foods that have ingredients in them that you wouldn't recognize normally unless you're a food chemist or you've uh, been involved in the industrial production of food in factories and the like or uh, these are foods that have been uh, taken not just from the animal or the plants, but have been refined, have been altered and modified, and have had things added to them that don't come uh, uh, necessarily naturally. Now, is it always bad? Well, that is always a question mark. Uh, when we talk about progress, in technology and science and we don't want to be Luddites that we reject all new things out of hand but as a rule of thumb it's usually safer or better to go with something that's not as processed I think that uh, that will remain the case uh, even going forward as long as we remain human beings the way we are in our shapes and forms as we recognize ourselves today unless technology changes that too However, technology advances, and uh, a lot of the advances in food technology that have happened in the last century, well, we're getting better at figuring out what is healthy. And yes, it's possible that you can develop a, a healthy food uh, using uh, newer technologies. So I wouldn't discard it out of hand. Uh, perhaps as an example, you, we can see today uh, the meat substitutes for those people that are trying to transition away from eating a lot of meat to uh, going vegetarian or vegan or being uh, plant predominant in their eating, so just reducing their meat intake. And yes, today there are available certain uh, meat substitutes that are based off of plant products and they, uh, they serve as a good stepping stone sometimes. I would not tell you that they're great just to continue to eat them in, in, into the future without a limit or, or the like, but they serve as a stepping stone for those that are trying to transition more towards a plant predominant diet. So that might not be a bad thing. In the future, well, we've seen things already that are benefit in the lower processed foods when you analyze them, that they have a, large, a higher water content. Some of them have higher fiber content. So when you drill down on these analyses, <clears throat> it is possible that we could, as we get better at this, start to develop uh, uh, more sophisticated and healthier foods in the ultra-processed category that might have convenience or might be easier to transport or might be made available for a longer period of time for people to consume. So we'll always leave that, that uh, open as a possibility that uh, science and technology advances enough that we can produce foods 
that we might classify in the NOVA classification as ultra-processed but are actually healthy. Having said that, the ones we have today in general as a rule of thumb may not be the best things for you even though they might be labeled like a health bar of some kind or a protein bar or some kind of supplement. Uh, so just be judicious in those things and if you go back given the state of things today to more of a uh, simple diet, a less processed diet uh, that's plant predominant, you're probably going to be in on safer ground. Now having said that, I mentioned it in the other video as well, just because something is minimally processed or not processed doesn't mean it's necessarily healthy. So make make uh, judicious choices, you know. There are, for instance, you know, plants that, that are poisonous and you can pick up a, a, a mushroom growing and not processes it at all and it might be poisonous. So you have to be judicious in your choices of what you're eating, even though you might be eating minimally processed or unprocessed uh, foods. Um, so I just wanted to leave it at that, leave that little uh, seed there that uh, the possibility exists that as things develop and we get better at things that the ultra processed foods uh, will become healthier as well and might become eventually uh, a, healthy foods in general. Now the other side of this is when you cross over into the world of pharmaceuticals. There are pharmaceuticals that we use in treatment of disease that are that derive from nature and are ultra processed and that's how they get these things. And yes that is uh, therapeutic. Uh, those things have been studied and closely supervised and scrutinized by regulatory bodies and uh, tested through science, uh, some of these things at great length. So in those cases, well, yeah, that's another example of something that might be ultra processed from the world of nature. Uh, it's derived and we create a, a medication that can be very helpful. Having said that though, that is more guided towards the medical world of uh, being under the care of a medical uh, practitioner, a healthcare provider that's familiar with those things and prescribes those things. So that's where medicine comes in. Going back to what we're doing in this series of lectures, this is about lifestyle and what you can do and the choices you can make in your life on a daily basis. And one of those choices is, yes, to try to concentrate more on foods that you can get easily locally in your area that aren't highly processed and they are mostly in the plant world and less so in the animal world. And if you go into the animal world, that they're not processed meats like salamis and um, sausages and things like this that are highly preserved or processed or modified in some way. And in fact, when you go down into the red meats, perhaps even that the way the animal was raised, perhaps on, on pasture, on grass, grass-fed, grass-finished, it's going to be better than, than red meat that's been finished or raised uh, through feedlots and are, have a different distribution of fat or may have higher fat content in their flesh. But having said that even, focusing on your plants, plant predominant, that most of your nutrition is coming through the plant world is probably going to be the healthier approach just on a daily and a routine basis of what's available to you. So again, this is all about lifestyle if, and it's not meant to be frustrating or, uh, or discouraging in any way. It's meant for you to be as healthy as possible so you can enjoy life as long as possible. If you like these kinds of videos, press that thumbs up press the subscribe button, press the little bell so you can be further notified and leave a comment and we can talk about those things in the future as well. So until next time, this is Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Bye-bye.